Hey guys, this is Michael from Concrete Chemistry. Today we'll be going over some more ice table practice problems. This is part two in a series where we'll go over all the different types of ways that ice problems can be asked, so you'll be prepared for any questions that you'll see on the test. The start of this question, we are given a reaction, this time containing a solid and then two gases. We're also given the Kc value, and we're asked to calculate the equilibrium concentration of the products if we're starting with some sample of the reactants. So let's start by just rewriting the reaction. PH3BCO solid becoming BH3 gas and BCL3 gas. Since we are asked to solve for the equilibrium concentration and we're starting with just a solid, we'll set up ice table. Solids and liquids do not go into the equilibrium expression, so whenever you have a solid liquid in your reaction with an ice table, just cross, cross them out. Initially, we just started with the, the reactant and we had no products, so this will be zero and zero, which means this reaction will proceed towards the right because we just have solid, so it can only go to the right. We don't have any, any products. Then the C line, this will be plus X and plus X, and then the E would just be X and X. Since we're given the Kc, we can solve, we can set up the Kc expression. Kc is going to equal concentration of pH3 times the concentration of BCl3. Plug in the values. One, Kc is 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 equals to x times x, so x squared. To solve for x, we just take the square root of both sides, and then we'll get x equals 0 0.0432 molar because this is Kc, so our, our units of x is just going to be uh, concentration or molar. Then we are asked to solve for the equilibrium concentrations of pH3 and BCL3. So they're both equal to x, so we, we can say the concentration of pH3 equals the concentration of BCL3, which is just x, and x is 0 0.0432 molar. Next question. This one is a little harder and it's, it's a little longer, but it it can be reflective of what you'll see on the exams. So in this question, we are, instead of working with concentration, we're working with pressure now. So we're given the pressure of the reactant, also the pressure of the products. We have the balanced chemical reaction. And then it tells us that at equi after equilibrium is reached, we have the partial pressure of NO2 is as such. So again, since we're working with initial and equilibrium, we'll set up an ice table. So for part A, N2O4 gas becoming NO2 gas. This time we're starting with ATMs. So the initial pressure of N2O4 is 1.500 atmosphere. The initial pressure of NO2 is 1.00 atmosphere. It tells us that at equilibrium, the pressure of NO2 is 0 0.512 atm. So initially it was one atm and then it and then it went down to 0 0.512 atm. So that must mean that the NO2 is getting consumed, which means that the reaction was going to the left this time instead of proceeding to the right. So if it's proceeding to the left, then that means these are getting consumed and these are getting produced. So this will be minus 2x because the coefficient 2, and then this will be plus x. And then the E line would just be the sum of the two lines, so 1.500 plus x and 1.00 minus 2x. That is equal to the, to the equilibrium pressure. So we can set that equal to 0.512. And then we can subtract 1 from both sides and divide by negative 2 to get x. And that will give us an x value of 0.244 atm. Then we take x and plug it back into the E line to get the equilibrium pressure of N2O4. So N, the equilibrium pressure of N2O4 is just 1.5 plus x. And that, that so is 1.5 plus 0.244. 
and that will give us 1.744 ATM. Okay, next for part B, we are asked to solve for the, the KP of the value for KP of the reaction. So we can start by writing out the KP expression. KP is just going to be the pressure of the products, NO2 squared because of the coefficient, divided by the pressure of the reactants, N2O4. Then we just need to plug in the equilibrium pressure in here to get the value of KP, which we already know the equilibrium pressure of NO2 was given to us in the question and it says it's 0.512. That'll be 0.512 squared divided by the equilibrium pressure of N2O4, which is what we saw for in part A, 1.744. Plug that into the calculator and then we'll get a value of 0 0.150. In part C, we're asked to calculate the Kc. So we have the Kp in part B, and then now we're converting it to Kc. So we just use the equation that connects Kp and Kc, and it's Kc equals Kp divided by Rt raised to the power of delta n. And then substitute the numbers in. Kp was 0 0.150. R is the gas constant, 0 0.08206. T is the temperature, it, but it has to be in Kelvin. Currently, our, the temperature is given in degrees Celsius, so we add 273 to that to get the temperature in degrees Kelvin. Delta N is the change in the number of moles of gas. So we went from 1 mole of gas to 2 moles of gas. So this would be 2 minus 1, so the delta N value would just be 1. Then we just plug this into the calculator and we'll get a KC value of 0 0.00613. In this video, we took a look at more ways that ice table problems could be formatted. Reactions can involve sol solids and liquids, so if they do, just get rid of those solids and liquids in the ice table. We also took a look at ice tables involving pressure as well as KC and KP calculation conversions. In the next video, we'll look at more ways that ice table problems can be asked. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.